Carla Thirsk. Um, I've been a part of the art scene out here on the West Coast for just about 40 years now, if not 40 years. Yuki put me on the map and uh, I've been proud to wear the title of Yuki Artist, even though I've just moved up to Tofino, <laughs> but hey, change is inevitable. <laughs> My dad was a frustrated artist because men of his generation were never encouraged to be artists. They had to be professional. So he poured all his artistic longing into me. And instead of reading uh, bedtime stories to me, he used to draw on a chalkboard. And always was my biggest encourager, but for the rest of my life until he passed away, he would always, always tell me what I should be drawing and how I should be doing it. Which is kind of funny when you think of it. But yeah. I'm adopted, so basically it's not a genetic thing. But when I did meet my biological mom, I have a half-brother and a half-sister, and my half-brother is extremely gifted as a potter. So that's kind of interesting if you think about it. I always dabbled in everything. I think that comes from never having formal training. Even though I wanted to, I just did different things with my life than going to art school. Before I actually moved over to Euclid, I was accepted into uh, the Vancouver School of Art, which is now the Emily Carr School of Art. But just when that happened, I was married to Carl Scott, and then he got the job over here in the fishing industry. And that's how we ended up over here. So, so much for that. But that's never held me back. And I, I actually think it's a good thing in a way, because it's never... I never got pigeonholed and anything that I was interested in or or something that excited me I literally would go and either buy a book or go to the library library one of the best resources on the planet and just teach myself how to do different things I think because I really didn't know a lot of the fine bits and pieces of what um, art mediums were and uh, correct usage of things to put on canvas like gesso and things like that. I had to learn all that stuff. But there is so many teachable books out there that it's not that difficult to figure out what you're doing. And I just basically approached it from what the hell, I'll just dive in and do it. Yeah. and figure it out from there. So you're gonna make yeah. a mess for a while until you thought That's it. never worried me. Never, ever, ever. Uh, I started out being a watercolorist, actually, and uh, lots of people have my watercolors. And I got out of watercolor because having the framing materials, you couldn't just do a watercolor and put it up on a piece of paper. It always had to be presented with a frame and glass and matting. And that just got ridiculous to try and deal with that out here. But because of that, I also opened up a little gallery in town. And that was 96, I think, 95, 96. And uh, because I could order in all my supplies for framing, etc. that way easier than I could put it in my little place that I lived at the time. The acrylic thing just kind of came from dabbling with it a bit and then just kind of changing over because it's so nice and easy and lovely and the color is rich and you know watercolor is probably one of the most difficult mediums and yet everybody starts with that. It's always kind of interesting to think but it, it's the most frustrating because before you know what you're doing, you can make muck out of it so easy. Mm -hmm. And it frustrates a lot of people, and I think they get turned off by that. <laughs> Yuki, it's funny, when I first got here way back in uh, the 70s, I started out by painting signs for Euclid businesses. Uh, at one point, you would get to the junction and every sign you saw after that was mine. I also did boats. A lot of the names on boats and the numbers on boats, that was a lot of fun. Uh, 
God, those days are so long gone. Where Gypsy Drifter is now, that whole side of the building there, actually around the corner where mental health is, that used to be my gallery. And when I moved into my gallery, I painted a mural on the outside there. The guys who ran the little store underneath where Gypsy Drifter is now asked me to do a mural on that big wall there. That was fun. That was great. I remember Duffy used to always come and talk to me doing that. From there, it went to where Cedar Grill is now. I did a mural for them. That's gone now. And it just took off. The town got me to do the pump house or whatever that is outside of Jamie's. The Yuki Dogs one. And then I painted the whole concrete thing that all went around there. I used to be outside all summer doing murals and stuff like that for a good while. That was a lot of fun. Prowse uh, really, really made all the difference getting involved with them uh, right from the start when it was still just a very, very tiny little society and we would meet in people's houses, uh, the shows, etc. I kind of walked in there and I was the only visual artist. Everybody else was musically inclined, so they went into the musical end of it and I took over the visual end of it and then I started building up the art show and the craft fair and that and did that for years and years and years until you know time moved on and stuff like that. At that time there was also the big uh, dance company um, the Paula Ross Dance Society, there it is. They were in the old um, Seaplane Blaze Hall. They had their little place in the back. If you ever remember in that very far back room, there used to be mirrors all around and that was their dance studio. So we incorporated being a part of them and that's when Prowse started to fund them for a lot of things. And then we brought in Missoula Children's Theater, etc, etc, etc. And um, I'm pretty, actually I'm pretty proud of the stuff that's happened with Prowse going from just a little very small place in people's homes and everybody having a little piece of the paperwork that any society generates stored in their basement or under their bed into actually having an office and a very recognized name. We Prez has got a really good name in the arts community and that's something to be proud of. I originally was just kind of painting whatever, you know, kind of still lifes and stuff. But I went to a souk show, the souk fine arts show. Every artist should go to that and see what a huge professional art show is run like. It was, it's amazing. I had had a piece of work accepted, but when I was walking through there, I saw this amazing painting of a woman in 1950s bathing costume or something. And I was so entranced by this painting it brought up a memory of um, all these old photographs I had of my mom and my mom died when I was quite young so I went home and brought out all these old photographs and it was like the floodgates opened from that and I started painting like crazy and I did women when I first really got into acrylics I did women which is why you see a lot of women around here but that picture up there which is just a um, print it's not the original that sold that went into the souk show the year after I saw that painting and won me the Diane Ferris um, jurors award and boom that's when my career took off I only had a certain amount of photographs of my mom to work from so that ended that and then I tried to I sort of got into doing like vintage um, bathing suited women and stuff like that but figurative work is difficult because it doesn't always appeal to everybody and people always want to put a face to a figure right they always ask you who is that or what is that and if you just say I don't know I just made him up they don't believe you <laughs> so, 
basically, I kind of got out of it because of that. I can't really talk about what it was that made me think, oh, I'm going to be a professional artist, because that was never something I thought about. I just considered myself an artist from the get-go. Always. And I always, always drew or painted or created something in some way or some form in whatever medium all my life. All my life. And wherever I was, I would do something and put it somewhere or put it out there. But that's the painting that really made my name known. Yeah. What drew me into doing animals? I literally can't remember. But that's sort of my thing now. And people obviously have an appetite for it because... It's been very, very good for me. This is the sketch. See? People always think sketchbooks of artists are going to be like these amazing works of art, and I just kind of laugh because mine are not. This is my thumbnail. And basically anybody looking at that would go, this person can't draw, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, but that's how it starts. It starts with something like that. And from there, I start pulling out all my files, and I have tons on the computer, too. And I print off pictures of, like, animals and things like that. And then I start doing cut and paste, just like kindergarten, guys. Re literally, everything we learned in kindergarten, hang on to it. And... I cut and I paste and I chop and I do all that. The picture that I start with is not as changed as this is, okay? I start with just ordinary looking people and stuff like that. But I have a photo app on my computer that I love. And it will take anything, any picture, and you can overlay a design or some kind of a graphic, whatever, and it will morph it into that. And that's basically what I do. And then I print those out. Uh, my, com my printer gets a huge workout. And then I put it all together, scan it in my scanner. Then I print it out <laughs> on my transparency thing, by the way. Yay for overhead projectors. Best things ever invented. And then I take that and I put it onto the canvas and then I just paint. And that's my process. My pleasure is painting. If I can put a roof over my head, I can pay my bills, give myself little treats every once in a while, get my art supplies. I am a happy camper. I know that I could probably get way more, but you know what? If you sell five paintings for five, between 400 and 500 each, as opposed to one big one, you're ahead of the game. And my pleasure is painting, not the other thing, you know? And I would rather have people happy than not in complaining. Oh, I'd love to have one of yours, but I can't afford it, you know? I'll paint to a budget, too. You tell me what you can afford, I'll do your painting for that. I would rather see art on somebody's wall, you know, make the money after I'm dead. I don't care. You know, if it makes something for you, more power to you, baby. Yeah. Besides, you know what the bottom line is? The government just takes it away from you anyway. If I get tired of painting the same thing all the time, I will flip and do something else. Like, this is why you see all these weird little things all around me. Because I'm doing something different for a bit. Yeah. yeah. The problem with doing weird little things is people fall in love with them and then want them. <laughs> I basically wanted an angel for the top of my Christmas tree and made this crazy thing out of paper clay. Paper clay is this wonderful stuff that is uh, basically very, very fine paper mache that almost seems like clay, hence the name. So I started making these and people would go, I want one too. And the next thing you know, everybody was had one. Uh, and 
the Christmas craft fair, of course, was going by that time. So I basically started making a whole bunch of those. And then from doing these funny things, I found uh, ball jointed dolls because of the way they're jointed, right? All the joints and everything. Oh, yeah. Everything's very tough around here because sure, Marla, Knox, I made that. <laughs> Marla knocks a lot of things out. So I just started playing with it and this was my first one, which is why I hang on to it because it's just so goofy. It's like everything. I kind of get into something, it takes me over and the next thing you know I'm like really possessed by doing it and then I have to get back to the focus there, girl. Yeah. <laughs> We build on the, the shoulders of those who have gone before us, right? There is no such thing as complete brand new on this planet. I, I, you know, it's just change. Art gets created in such an insular environment, you're not really sure if what you're doing has meaning sometimes. I mean, it's lovely, you know your paintings are selling and that, but um, to know that you've kind of helped someone who's coming up behind you that that's that's a good feeling that's a good feeling and i have to give signy at reflecting spirit a little shout out because honestly on this coast she has been such a strong supporter of so many artists and creative souls out there um wonderful lady and um a huge huge supporter in so many ways of creative people and uh, worth worth going into her gallery and she's worked really hard she's also a hugely talented artist in her own right bless her because we've been losing galleries left right and center when i first came here there were so many art galleries and places that were available to put your work in and now we're basically just down to signy and you know the small orange door gallery that Praz has that's really up. it well mark's always of course been here but that's yeah. basically geared towards him and same with um, roy yeah. vickers and rightly so, if you can, mm -hmm. you, why not? Yeah. I'm impressed by all the young artists coming up in Yuki, and I'm really glad about that because I don't want it ever to end. I really, honestly, my biggest dream about this place, and uh, if I can do it, this is my last big project I want to do, I want an art school out here. I think this is the perfect place for it. We are so rich in creative people. Music, dance, theater, um, art, visual arts, performance, art, everything. I think this place is made for it. I really, really do. And to focus on something other than tourism, and I know it is saved a lot of people, but I think that is like a year-round positive thing that would really, really add to this place. I'd love to see that come to fruition. And I really wanted the old um, Coast Guard station to do it in. <laughs> you never know. I will work on that. Yeah. Posters. Oh, yeah. oh. I did posters for Whale Festival. Oh, and I did like chalkboards for restaurants and that, you know, the yeah. menu boards and so on and so forth. I used to write comics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For people who are starting out who always think, you know, there aren't enough shows, there aren't enough this, I just tell them get involved and do as much art as you can. Teach classes, uh, design things, get involved with groups that have any sort of interest for you and art, figure out artistically how you can add to it. Do things that actually get you known and put your name out there. That, that really was what did it for me, is getting involved in the community and doing artistically anything that I could think of and just living that life and Yuki has been very very good to me I'm really really happy to have landed up here and uh, I'm also really glad that I get to be an artist for the rest of my days yeah I just want to go with my 
nose flat into a canvas. Thank you very much.